sailing around the mostly open oceans of Wind Waker is a perfect gaming memory to me. There was a Game Builder Garage game that reminded me of that open feeling, and it's called Isles of Dover. It includes a big map, several unique islands with characters who are all connected to one another in one big questline, sailing, backtracking, and puzzle solving all together in one GBG level. Controlling your own boat felt great, and I wanted to make a boat setup for myself in Game Builder Garage. The amount of story and gameplay opportunities that opens up is vast, so let's get into it. Our person here longs for a journey on the sea, but he is on a crate in a poisonous grassland with a bunch of textures floating around, so let's fix that. We're starting out with a basic person controller setup, left and right stick controlling the person movement and the camera, he can jump and use one expression with a Y button. We have a world node on where we've just set it to destructive to the player object. And we have three ocean textures. We're going to create a small animation controller to switch between the three textures. We'll start with one constant node on and a timer. Set the timer to the time that you want each frame to be present for. Then we'll add in a counter to keep track of the frame that we're currently on. We'll set it to loop with a range of 0 to 3. So there are three possible results. We're going to move this over and we're now going to add three comparison node on. One will be equal, one will be less than, and one will be greater. Since there are only three options and they are 0, 1, and 2, we can connect the counter to the top input on each of these comparisons and then connect that original one constant node on to the bottom. So the result will either be less than, equal to, or greater than 1. For each of these outputs, you'll connect it to one existing texture and you will connect the texture to the world node on. Ideally, you want to make these textures so that they overlap with each other, so that they look seamless. But I am not that good of an artist, so we ended up with this. And I think it looks pretty good. Now we can move on to our actual boat. Now the engine, or soul of the boat, is a car controller. It's actually going to glide around the floor of the world and we'll build the boat on top of it. We'll set it so that it's only solid and we'll eventually make it really tiny, but for now we'll leave it a little bit larger so we can see what we're doing better. We'll add our first box object to be the floor of the boat, and we'll attach it to the top of the car. We'll make sure that the connection point is Y negative, Y positive, so it sits directly on top of the car, and we'll get rid of the destructive and destructible settings. You can now change the shape of the floor to match the design of your boat. You can make it in any design. I have a couple of sizes that I tested out. It's X 3.2, Y.4, and Z 6.8. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add walls to the side of our boat so that we don't fall off and it's more of a boat and less of a raft. Now, the problem with building things in Game Builder Garage, you can't really connect objects how you'd like, so we kind of have to play around with the objects and connect them in slightly weird ways to make it all work. I'm going to change the size of this so that it looks like it could fit on the side appropriately, and then I'm going to make a copy of it. We're going to attach the first border to the X negative, X positive connector so that it sits to the right of the object. I also got rid of the camera for now so we can move the camera around and look at our boat as we build it. Then you'll connect the second rectangle. What we're going to do is align its center with the top of the original. So the connection point will be center Y positive. We'll also make the original box object non-solid so that the other object can sit overlaid on top of it. And when we hit play, we'll see that now they stack on top of each other such that the red solid box object will act as our physical wall to the boat. And the white object will just go into the water and make the boat look seamless. It'll cover up the car. We'll make a duplicate of these two walls and we'll connect it on the opposite X axis so that they cover the other side. Next, you can copy these two box objects again, duplicate them, and this time we're going to connect them on the Z axis, one to Z negative and one to Z positive. So it's on the front and back of the boat. You'll need to resize these box objects. You can check the measurement on your boat and then apply the numbers directly to these box objects so that you're not guessing, or you can just rotate them and play around with the sizes until you see something that you like. In this case, it was 3.3 on the longest unit. Now that you have one, you can simply duplicate it to get the other and attach it to the boat floor, but switch the Z side. In this case, we're gonna switch it to the Z positive. So now we have the basic body of the boat. I'll add the camera back to the player character and we can jump inside the boat. 
At the end of the video, I'll show you how to increase the size of the boat, but you can technically keep adding onto this boat until you have whatever kind of warship or armada you want. Next, we'll add the inputs to maneuver the boat. We'll add three button press nodons. One will be the left button, the right button, and the ZR button. These will be for controlling directions and for pure acceleration. I'll use the L and R button presses to control the steering. L for left and right for R. Since R will be right, we'll plug it directly into the steering wheel since that will turn right, and we'll use an invert nodon to send L as a negative signal so it turns left. So now we can use R2 to accelerate, and then L and R to turn. Though it's looking a little wacky, and boats don't naturally move like that, so we're going to have to manipulate the outputs a bit. You can start by decreasing the overall movement speed of the car, since boats don't zip around on top of the water. That'll help things to feel a little bit more muted. And then we're going to manipulate the button press outputs with multiply node on and constant node on. In this case, we're taking out a 0.02, and we're going to multiply that with the signals of our button presses. It's easier to use individual multiplication nodons so that if you press both buttons at the same time, weird things don't happen. So in this case, we're multiplying the left and right turn signal by 0.02. Now the car won't actually rotate unless there's some forward motion also applied. So I'm gonna make it so that L and R also have their own muted calculate nodon multiplier so that they slightly accelerate the boat so that it still turns a little bit when you press the button even if you're not accelerating. Now it's very slight and you're gonna wanna spend some time playing around with these numbers and the way that you multiply the outputs until you get something that feels natural for the way that you want your boat to move. If it's a massive warship, for example, you likely don't want it to be able to turn on a dime, but if it's a smaller raft, then it would make sense that it could turn a lot faster. This is your moment to dial in the physics of your boat. Make sure that the inversion node on output does not go into the acceleration input on the car, since then you'll be going backwards when you make a left turn. So now we're going to decrease the size of our boat and get to texturing the ship. I created a simple texture with some wooden beams that are nailed in, and we just apply it to every single box object on the boat. But you can really spend a lot of time here and customize the boat exactly how you want it. So that's looking good in my opinion, and now we're going to add the sails and the sail post. We'll add a cylinder object, and I don't want to overburden the box here, so we're going to attach it to the top of the car itself. We'll manipulate the size until we like the way that it looks and leave it solid and visible. Though if you're going to add a texture like we are later, you can leave it invisible so you don't see those little seam lines. Then we'll get our texture, which is 3.5 by 2.4. We can size the box to the same dimensions as the texture so that it looks seamless. Since this is going to be the shape that represents our sails, we'll attach it to the texture and attach it to the top of the post. I want it to look like there are two sails and that the post continues up through the sail. So we'll make it so that the texture applies to the box object on the Z positive and Z negative, so it's only on the front and back face, and we'll make the box object itself invisible so that you only see the texture. Then we'll apply a pole on top of the original, but have it non-solid so that it looks like the pole is going up th through the two sails. I add wood texture and now I'm fairly happy with it. There's a little bit of clipping here which you can avoid by increasing the size of the box on the Z axis so that it doesn't clip with the wooden post. And you can make this cylinders invisible like we said so that you don't see the seams. In total, this is only 45 node on for your boat, which means you have 450 just about to complete the rest of your game, which is really not bad. Now, you can easily change the size of your boat and keep tacking on objects. There really shouldn't be a limit to just how big you can make it. All you have to do is change the base size and then change the size of the borders. And you have yourself a ship that's ready to take on the open seas. If you end up using a boat in your game or making something bigger and more impressive, then be sure to share the code in the comments.